Barbara's time. So I'll introduce Barbara Kiernan. Um, she has been working on a Rotary International project um, in Mexico. And Mike, she needs to get control of uh, the screen. Okay, Barbara, you're the host now, so you can share screen and we'll let you take it away. Well, thank there you it so is. much. It is just fun to be here. And to tell you the truth, I love your meeting. And Alan, it is just fine. I think your humor is exactly what your district governor was referring to. So you've been all around the world, I hear listening to different Rotary projects from different places. And today I wanna to take you to a place that has been part of my life for the past four years. And I wanna celebrate. And this is what we've been doing ever since this global grant ended. So let's use the Spanish word, celebremos. It is a wonderful time to actually see that the work we've been working on has been successful, a successful completion of our Rotary Global Grant. And it started in 18 and it ended in December of 20. Um, we're, our goal was to improve the healthcare for indigenous people in remote areas of Sonora, Mexico. We absolutely provided help for today, we did. But part of our goal was to provide a model for tomorrow, for others to see if this approach would work. And I hope by the end of this, you see that in fact it has. First of all, there are a lot of indigenous people in Sonora. By the way, this graph right now, our map shows this USA. Well, that's Arizona, that entire top area. And this is Sonora, which is our closest neighbor to the South. And you can see that it has a variety of indigenous people living there. We, perhaps you've heard of the Seri or the Yaqui or the Mayo, but we are actually working with the Guadijillo. The Guadijillo are also known as the Macurawe, which is actually their own name for it, just as the Papago is here. And now they're really, they're calling themselves by their original name, the Toronto Autumn. The other names were given to them by the Spanish. And just as the Navajo people are now referring to themselves by their name of Diné, so on and so forth. It's really important, I think, that we understand the importance of these names. The indigenous villages that are served in this global grant, and that's what GG stands for, are below. There are four clusters of remote Guarajillo, Macurawe villages with no Western healthcare. There's seven villages overall, 1,600 people, 219 square miles. And they have wonderful names like Burapaco, Mesa Colorada, Guajaray, Mochibampo. Here is the way you would enter our area. We'd come down actually past where Virginia Jutner used to live on I-19. We go through Nogales. We go all the way down on this wonderful, uh, beautiful highway, number 15, that goes all the way to Mexico City. We come down to the capital of um, Sonora, which is Hermosillo, and continue on to Guaymas, which is usually where we choose to stop after six hours of driving and spend the night and have a dinner on the beach and kind of rest after that drive, which is a beautiful drive, but it's a six hour drive. The next day we get up and we go down, whoops, sorry, uh, down a little bit further to, well, where's my screen? Here it is, um, to the little town of Navajoa. And the little town of Navajoa is where we'll turn left and go to Alamos. And Alamos is gonna be our center of operation. But the villages that we're gonna serve are right here, okay? So I said Alamos, this is actually a wonderful, wonderful place. If you have ever been to Northern Mexico, this is a place you should go. You can drive to it easily. It is a beautiful, what they call Pueblo Magico. This is a designation that is given to those cities or towns in Mexico that have preserved their colonial um, aspect. Things like cobblestone streets and beautiful plazas. And right here we are looking at the cathedral that's in Alamos at night. That moon actually does shine like that. This is not my picture, but I wish it were. This was our base of operation, partly because it has a lot of services and also because in it is our medical partner. If you're gonna work on providing healthcare, 
you are going to have to do more than just affiliate with a Rotary Club. You really want to look for people who know the people, know the area, and who know medicine. And the people that we've affiliated with were the Clinica Integral Almas. But once you get beyond Alamos, let me tell you, there are many, many barriers. There's a great distance from the clinics and hospitals. And in fact, the closest Guajillo um, Macoraue Pueblo is two and a half hours outside of um, Alamos. Um, there are no public transportation, there is no public transportation and very poor roads. Here is a picture I did take. There's the car we went down in. It's a Jeep, four wheel drive, all of that. And we're driving on a really excellent road. But you know, in the rainy season, that wouldn't even be called a road, that would be called a river. And so the driving conditions are very, very difficult. In addition, the native language is not Spanish. It is Guadalajara, Macorahue. So there's a language barrier and there's a very limited access to cell, electricity and water. And all of this parlays into a lack of timely medical treatment and very poor stabilization for emergency transport. But the good news is, if you put a global grant in an area that has a need and you put it next to a series of uh, places that have resources, you have an opportunity to get something done. And so we find sustainable resources, partners, and other opportunities in this area. Of course, I've mentioned the Clinica Almas, but there are also social security hospitals. Social security hospitals are free to all Mexicans. And we just have to get the people out of the mountain into the hospitals and there they can have surgeries and treatment. There are also in the community trainees just waiting to be taught how to be those healthcare promoters. They're waiting for us to come. And we are so lucky that we are in the 21st century because to tell you the truth, the technical advances that have come along, solar power, satellites, telemedicine, you name it, they're all making up for the lack of infrastructure that happens in some of these areas. And I wouldn't be uh, able to move away without saying there is also Rotary in Sonora. Rotary is huge in Mexico overall. Every town you go into welcomes you with a great big Rotary wheel and tells you what time they meet and you're welcome to join. Um, so that is a wonderful strength. And I have to tell you, it all began under a tree. I have always wanted to be part of that communal meeting where the village describes what they're doing and what they're planning and what their hopes and dreams are. And it happened for us as we planned for this global grant. What you see here is a circle. In the middle of the circle is the Dr. Petit, who is indeed the uh, director of Clinica Almas. She has been working in this area for more than four years before we began the grant. So she was very familiar with the people and the people were very familiar and trusting of her. And over here is Juan. Juan is an elder in the community and he is speaking in Guadalajara. So Dr. Petit is doing the work in um, Spanish and, and um, Juan is doing it in Guadalajara. Around this center are the women and children sitting down with the men around in the back. But throughout this are also Rotarians. There's me, and somewhere in here is Frank uh, Presson. Rotarians who went down with us on a <clears throat> as we prepared the needs assessment. And just so you know, right in the middle of this whole circle is are the dogs, all of them sitting around watching what's going on. This is a small component of the people that came down for our friendship exchange. We had a district governor, here is Frank Cresson, here I am. And above me is Betsy. Uh, Dr. Betsy is the director of the clinic and to her right and to your left is uh, Cornelia. Cornelia is the healer, the curandera, the healthcare provider. And it is she in conjunction with the elders of the Guarijio Macurawe community that asked for this help. They said our traditional medicines are very effective. They work, we believe in them, we have our gardeners. In fact, they have botanicals that you and I would love to know about. But they know that those botanicals are not enough to cure everything. And so bringing in Western medical approaches really can help. And so it is that combination of, re of literally revering the traditions of both medical 
and also um, traditional medicine that is bringing us together here. At the end of this exchange, we came away with four key objectives and a global grant that we proposed. First of all, we wanted to train four village promotoras. Those are adults that are actually gonna be the eyes and ears of the doctors. They're gonna be the people who are going to know about treating people and following through. But we also wanna train 12 vinculadores. Those are young high school students who are interested in medicine and science. And at the end of this grant, one of the uh, benefits is that those uh, 12 high school students are going to be offered a scholarship at a community college on the coast in EMS or emergency medical um, services. So this is a wonderful group of people who are going to stay in the villages and treat people and also youth who are going to be promoted in the future toward this very same end. We also wanted to provide basic health care equipment to the villages, to the promoters, and to the clinic. And of course, we want to train the entire community so that everybody can understand and access healthcare. And finally, we want to provide telemedicine based on solar powered satellite system. So that no matter where they are, we are going to be able to keep them in contact with good medical care. And in July of 18, the Rotary International um, Global Grant was awarded. And in February of 2018, literally um, just seven months later, um, we began. And we inaugurated it in the town of Alamos in one of the beautiful colonial mansions in the way that Mexicans celebrate everything with music, with theater, with mariachis. And they made these three wonderful puppets um, to surprise us. And by the way, this is B. After the celebration, the man with this 10 foot tall puppet, I think she's even taller, came to me and said, oh, and now I have good news for you. This is you. My husband, of course, is standing next to me and he's imagining taking a 10 foot puppet back to Tucson. Fortunately, I found a home for her down there in Alamos and she's living there still. During that celebration, during the inauguration, we had rotary commitment tiles presented to each of the sponsoring clubs. A, an artist from my club, M. Craig, painted these roof tiles, they're called tejas, and they were given one to, the, uh, to a, a representative of the Catalina Rotary Club, which is the international partner, and also to the president of the Navajoa Club, which is our host Rotary Club. And on the right is somebody that you all should have in any kind of a grant you do internationally, and that is my liaison. He is a bilingual Spanish English person who knows everything about that area has lived there all his life and he is a CPA. And if you're working with rotary funds, you better be able to take care of them in the local currency and know all the rules and regs. And thank you Vicente. <laughs> and so this is the Navajo Rotary Club. There are 22 members of this club. And what you see here is actually a beginning of the meeting between club members and the doctors from the clinic and the people who are actually handling the grant on the ground and they're getting all of their rules and regs set up so that they can solve problems for the next two years. And then the work began. Intensive training for our promotoras and our vinculadores. We have first aid, we have CPR, we have learning to take data and we have learning about the body and all the things that can, uh, can make it ill. And most importantly, how can we prevent it? We also provided equipment. On the left, you see a starter nurse's kit, which was given to each of our 16 trainees. It had a blood pressure cup, a, a stethoscope, uh, you name it, thermometer, everything you could possibly need to really take those vital signs. And in addition, we provided equipment like this um, portable sonogram so that mothers, when they're ready to deliver their babies, don't have to go down those two and a half hours plus road to find out if their baby's positioned correctly. So this, now the villages have this kind of equipment available. And here you have a, actually a mentor of mine, Dr. Gladke, who is an audiologist. And it is, he's one of the reasons I ended up down there. Um, he is holding in his hand one of the new technologies that have to do with testing hearing. If any of you have had your hearing tested, you know you need to go into a soundproof booth. 
doesn't have any echoes, is a perfect conductor of sound, et cetera. Well, you're never gonna get that type of a, an enclosure out in the jungle or in the forest or in the villages. So what they've developed is this, it's called a Kungo um, audiometer. And those white um, ear covers are actually soundproof rooms that go right over your ears. And inside that is a little tiny cannula that then goes into your ears. And in that setting, you can get as reliable an audiogram as you could get in a soundproof booth. It's a wonderful thing. And of course, it's attached to all of your computer technology so that all of this audiogram is recorded. Now, you have to also know that, of course, we provided telemedicine equipment. This is not the telemedicine that you are probably expecting to see in a hospital. It really is, these solar panels started all off. I personally carried them down in my car along with eight others so that we could set up portable solar gathering system throughout the villages. And this solar power, this solar energy was captured and stored in a regular old car battery that could be used then to power things like a breathing machine. But importantly, it could also power our satellite um, modem. And that satellite modem took the place of having cell phone connectivity. But the whole crux of what people use is their cell phone. You know, and truthfully, this cell phone, that's the size of it. You could put that modem on top of your car, you could carry the phone in your hand. It is a very, very possible telemedicine system right out in the middle of a very, very difficult area. And then at the end of the first year, Rotary announced to me that they were going to send a cadre down to kind of have a look, see, and evaluate what we were doing. The, the graphic that I put here probably represents what I think my neurons were doing when I got that. On the one hand, I was very proud. I thought, terrific, now we get all right to come and see us personally. On the other side, it's like, oh my God, what are they gonna be looking for? Well, let me tell you, that I found those four days of RI's involvement to be really constructive review opportunities. We met for a whole day in Navajoa with the people there. Whoops, here am I, and here is our evaluator under the rotary signs. We also met for a day in the clinic with the doctors and talking about all that we had done and talking about all that we could even make better. It was a very, very constructive um, opportunity. And of course, we went out to the villages. So here's Dr. Petit, and here is the president of the Navajo Rotary Club and our evaluator. And there is, here are some of the doctors and promotoras. And of course, the villagers are sitting around. This is just in one of the seven villages. I want to share with you something that I learned during that time. Do you see this sign? This sign I designed, and it started off looking very different. It started off looking like any of the rotary signs that we might put up around the community when we're doing work. Rotary here to help, rotary at work, rotary improving healthcare. And Dr. Petit said to me, Barbara, you know what? How many times do people come and tell these people what we're going to do for you? Isn't it the case that we want them to be empowered to take charge of all of this? And in fact, recognize the work that they've put into this. So ultimately the sign ended up like this. In, in English, it says, our Makurawe community and its healthcare promoters are here for you in collaboration with Rotary and the doctors of the Clinica Almas. What an interesting opportunity to develop some cultural humility that I think is really required when we talk about global health. And then I came back across the border in February Throughout the entire year, I had not heard the word COVID. I had not heard it in January or February in Mexico. I guess it didn't exist on there, but it sure existed in Arizona when I crossed over the border. And COVID times changed everything for you and for me. So we went back into the villages. And when I say we, I mean the doctors. And they went back right away to make sure that these pueblos were safe because these indigenous people I've not had the same exposure to Western diseases and could easily have been just totally wiped out if COVID had hit their midst. So in March of 2020, they went back, all kinds of things from closing down villages to social distancing, 
through putting on masks and gloves took place. And I tell you what, we've already been a year into the grant and the training and the equipment paid off. During the entire time that we were there, all during the, the pandemic to this very day, there is not one single indigenous person who has uh, had COVID. Nobody has died or become ill from this terrible pandemic disease. You know, when I started this grant, many, many people, even in our eyes said to me, are you sure that people with relatively low literacy rates are going to be able to handle the technological side of all of this? Well, let me tell you, they may not always have cell phone connectivity, but the young people of those communities have a cell phone and they know how to work a, uh, a smartphone. They know about blue teeth. They know about all of this. So I tell you what, I can vouch for the fact that they could and did adopt and use the technology and training that we provided in a way that saved their pueblo. So in December of 2020, it really was time to celebrate the global grant success so that we use the annual puppet festival to kind of provide a closure to this grant cycle. And here's one of the puppeteers. They did a lot more than do puppets. In this case, she's got a clothesline. I wonder if you can see it going all the way through the village and all of the children masked up and everything are holding on to it and following her like the Pied Piper of Hamlin. And you can just see the joy on their face to come together in this kind of community. And you can almost hear the music and they're getting ready to party. But of course, just as in the United States, we're looking at masks, hands, social distance, the whole drill. In fact, the word for distance, we call it social distancing, but you know what they call it in Spanish? They call it sana distancia. Sana distancia means healthy distance. Isn't that perhaps an even more appropriate term? And so, as I mentioned, we took advantage of the Puppet Festival. It is really a, each year of our grant, we used it for this purpose, but now we're using it as a closure, a celebration. It's perfect for community learning and sharing. Here is the puppet, one of them, and here is his handler, puppeteer. Notice that the hand of the puppeteer is actually the hand of the puppet with a little bit of burlap and staged against the beautiful background of the uh, sierras. We have a wonderful setting. It is a visual art. It is very interactive. Think of Punch and Judy, the give and take between performer and audience. It's very memorable. It's also very non-threatening. You can deal with topics from a puppet like uh, domestic violence, suicide, um, alcoholism, that you really would have a harder time in this culture dealing with face to face with the person. It is a fun way to teach and it's a fun way to learn. And they have great big puppets too. Don't you love it? This great big face and here is his, her handler. Here's her arm being moved by a little um, piece of metal and another puppet. Well, I tell you what, this year's show we designed specifically to act as a kind of closing um, thing. So the puppeteers were uh, tasked with creating a script, portraying how much promoters have done to keep their villages safe and well. But the key ingredient had to be fun. So the title of the show is Los Tres Bichos. A bicho in Spanish is anything small and creepy crawly, something you probably don't want to have around. And it's standing in for the word microbios, which means germs. So we're talking about those three germs. And the characters, we have villains uh, who are the three germs. They have wonderful names that come from the various <laughs> cultures you might breed from them. The victims are the promotores and the heroes, of course, are the villagers and the children. So the plot is that the germs just cannot get the villagers sick anymore because the promotores are teaching them to protect themselves. Can you imagine washing hands all the time, using chloro to uh, cleanse things? So the germs plan to attack the promotores when they are not looking. But of course, the resolution, villagers and, and children rescue the promotores and foil their attempts at every turn. It's just wonderful and everyone enjoys, mask and all.
And after the show is done, they carried it forward onto the playground with games like you see here on the left where they're literally talking about a game that has to do with sana distancia, with social distancing. And here we have a, one of the puppeteers charging in to take charge of their own health. And it's really a wonderful kind of way for the children to enjoy the parents sitting around in the background. I think you can see watching it all. And of course, we provided lots of wonderful food. And to tell you the truth, this took place in each of the seven villages, something that we might have pulled together into a more congregated way, but respecting COVID, we did not. And I wanted to read to you very briefly about the impact that it had on the villages and on the people involved. And I include myself in what this person, I've translated it from the Spanish. This is a text. Dear Dr. Elizabeth, I just wanted to share with you that we are very happy with the work we are doing in the Sierras. Coming to Alamos and having such a personal contact with the children and their family has grounded us a lot. The conditions in which they all live hurt us deeply and we would love to continue supporting this work. Seeing each of the different communities this time has given us all a lot of context for your vision and effort. It has truly generated something very beautiful in our very being. In truth, I am very grateful to you for trusting me and my team to do the Community Puppet Festival. You have changed our lives and we have learned so very much. We are happy to be here. And Ovid, the puppeteer, concludes, thank you, my good friend, and please forgive me for telling you this in the middle of the night, but I have cried, laughed, and reflected on this whole experience and was burning to tell you how much we also want to contribute something to this crazy world. Thank you for everything you do to make a difference. With admiration, Ovid. Wouldn't you like to get a letter like that after completing a project that has made such a difference? So I share with you now, two years ago, the same puppet festival, just a brief look. I love the last pictures of the people crossing the river. That's the only way to get from village to village, but they all came. And it was just really a remarkable testament to how important this was for them. Let's hope that those times return soon. And now the global grant has ended, but the effort continues. We have trained 16 Guadijillo Makurawe healthcare promoters. We provided medical equipment that stayed in the village and the clinic. And the telemedicine system is up and running. And a University of Arizona grant has been given to keep it going. The colleges of medicine, nursing, pharmacy, and public health are all going to use the telemedicine equipment and our trained promotores to actually provide for their students in global health a virtual pract practicum experience that they could not have almost any other way. I'm involved in helping that course develop. I'm really excited to see it being offered. And when time permits and healthcare permits, we are also hoping that we can take people back down again. So thank you Rotarians and the Clinic Almas for making this happen. What you see on the left is the courtyard of the clinic and all of the promotores that were trained. And on the right is a little guy that every time I showed up in his village of Guajaray, he would come up to me, ay señora, señora, por favor, foto, foto. And so I would take his picture and we would sit down together and we would look at that picture. And his smile says it all to me. These are the people that we're trying to help. 
And with that, I want to thank you for listening and for being interested in, in all that Rotary does and for doing all that you as Rotarians do. So I'll stop sharing right now and I'd love to take questions. Any questions? That was a great presentation. Question. Thank you so much. I, I just want to commend you for using humor in such a constructive and um, it just it was a it was lovely to learn about. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think your club would appreciate humor. I can see that this is a theme <laughs> that goes throughout. And you know what? That light touch is also part of the success of what we did. <clears throat> we taught in a way, not with books, not with PowerPoints, not with, with written materials, although those were there as resources. We taught through cases. We taught through pictures of their village. We taught and made it fun. So um, thank you for that comment. It's a, it's a good teaching technique. I'm also in, incredib incredibly moved that, um, that you were so respectful to the culture and that um, you had the wisdom not to just go in and judge and, and try to promote something different, but that you worked so beautifully with the people and um, experienced that um, just that that magic that can happen when people are are open to one another. I'm just incredibly moved by it all and very appreciative that you shared this with us this morning. Thank you, Thank you Tim. You know what? I think that cultural humility is something that when we build this course, we are very much hoping to communicate that need in our professionals that go out into the world to not only bring what you know, but learn from them and try to integrate what you're doing with what they're doing so they will continue to do it. You know, there's a lot of people. So thank you. I, I appreciate it. That's how I felt too. Thank you. Barbara, this is Alan. Uh, congratulations. I, I, I was very moved by your presentation. Um, I especially enjoyed your pronunciation of the words. It's so beautiful and melodious. You know, it, it makes me feel good to uh, hear that. We had a Rotarian from South America once before. I can't remember her name now, but uh, she used to pronounce the words that we mangle uh, every day. And, and when you listen to the words pronounced correctly, it is such a beautiful language. So thank you very much. Uh, the only concern I, uh, question I had was... Uh, what kind of, um, what about your safety? Um, I don't mean uh, the disease or anything, but the safety from, you know, the political turmoil and everything in, in Mexico. You know, people have a very interesting um, view of Mexico and its violence. And I'm not going to say that there isn't violence but this is happening in very discreet places. And I think there, it is more a construction perhaps of, um, of the news than it is of the reality. And I think you and your hometowns probably know of places that you don't go after 10 o'clock at night alone, wandering around with a purse full of money or something. So we went down there with friends. I have been in Mexico for the past, I wanna say eight years, and I have never felt any less safe than in the United States. The people are wonderful, they take care of you. If you're working with people like we did, we were out in the mountains, out in the Sierras, and I probably expect that there are some carteles out there um, kind of watching, but they know what Dr. Betsy is doing. They want the people around them to be healthy. They're not looking for the government to send in masses or hordes of this and that. So they're very respectful of her as well. So I think you have to be careful. You have to plan it. But I think that the it is really um, not as, I, I think in many cases, there are places in the United States that are more dangerous than in Mexico. I really do. So Anyway, political commentary, right? But that's my experience and I've been doing it for a long time. And thank you, by the way, the big island, you know, actually has a lot of Spanish language things to it. I bet you hear it because even the Paniolos, you know, those Mexican, those cowboys that came over, uh, you've got a whole tradition there. 
that has been brought over by charros, bad people who are these cowboys. So um, I had once in my former life, when I was a director of a center, I had a pañolo fiesta and we had Ernie Menhuni come and he is a Hawaiian and he did all the wonderful songs that come from the big island. And, and I learned a lot about, about you guys. So anyway, thank you very much, Alan. <laughs>